Hi students! This is Ma'am Dea again and today, we will be trying to use your previous knowledge of the types of seismic waves in order for you to locate the epicenter of an earthquake. At first, you will think, is it really possible to locate the epicenter of an earthquake? Uh, don't we need special materials for us to locate the epicenter? Actually, given some data, you can already identify or locate the epicenter of one earthquake. And we will be discussing it today. Now, what method will we be using? We will be using what we call the triangulation method. Why is it called triangulation method? Because, just like a triangle wherein a triangle has three sides, in this method, you need three different seismic stations for you to get a point of intersection, just like in this image. Well, this image is provided in your module. As you can see, we have three circles, one showing the seismic station found in Bohol, the second, a seismic station found in Negros Oriental, and third, a seismic station found in Cebu. So once you have data coming from these three different seismic stations, you can get the point of intersection of the three circles you have drawn and that will show you where the epicenter of an earthquake is. Just a short recap of what we have discussed in the previous video, there are two main types of seismic waves and those are body waves and surface waves. Body waves has two subtypes and they are primary waves and secondary waves while surface waves have two subtypes as well which are love waves and Rayleigh waves. Now going back to the two types of body waves which are primary waves and secondary waves, since these waves are the waves that can travel through the interior of the earth, then these waves play an important role in identifying the epicenter of an earthquake. How? Because we know that primary waves travel faster than secondary waves, this means that P waves will be received earlier in the seismic stations than the S waves. So therefore, there would be a time difference. This time difference will help us identify the distance of the epicenter from the three seismic stations. Now, I will be showing you a demonstration on how to do the triangulation method. In this video, I will be using a different set of data which I have used in my previous classes. So here we have a map of the Philippines and I have data for three places which are Iloilo, Naga, and Tarlac. First, what materials will you be using? Well, you will be using a drawing compass. However, if you don't have it, you can improvise using a pencil and a string. Also, you will be needing a ruler and if you have an extra pencil or a ball pen, you will also be needing it for calculations. So there, the three seismic stations that we will be using for this example or demonstration are Iloilo, Naga, and Tarlac. So, we are also provided here the time difference between the arrival times of P waves and S waves and the distance of the epicenter from the seismic station. Why are these important? Because that distance of the epicenter from the seismic station will serve as the radius of the circle that you will be drawing in a short while. So, one important thing to Know here is that the computed distance of the epicenter from the seismic station is the actual distance, which is in kilometers. However, we are trying to draw this on a smaller scale, so therefore we have to convert this into a smaller length using the given scale. The given scale is 1 centimeter is equal to 100 kilometers very important this scale only applies to this demonstration other maps will have different scales just like in your module so you will be using another scale for your module so we are given the following 
data. So we are given the data for Iloilo. We are also given data for Naga. And we are also given data for Tarlac. What are these data? For this data that I'm talking about is the distance of the epicenter from these respective seismic stations. So, for example, for Iloilo, we have 520 kilometers. And then for Naga, we have 320 kilometers. And for Tarlac, we have 280 kilometers. Our scale here is 1 cm is equal to 100 kilometers. Again, very important. This only applies to this example or this demonstration. In your module, you will be having different scale. Other graphs or other maps would also have different scales. How do we convert this using the scale? So we have to multiply our distance by... 100 kilometers in the denominator and 1 centimeter in the numerator in order to cancel the kilometers. So, we can simply um, do this mentally. So, 520 divided by 100 would be 5.20 centimeters. We will be doing the same with Naga and Tarlac. Now, these three values would be the lengths or the radii that you will be using in drawing your three circles. You can record this on the third column you can find in the paper that I am showing in the demonstration. Now, after recording this data, it's time for you to mark these places in our map. I'm referring to Iloilo, Naga, and Tarlac, so make sure you know your geography. Next, starting with Iloilo, draw a circle with a radius corresponding to the distance of the epicenter from Iloilo, which we have computed a while ago. And that is equal to 5.2 centimeters. Make sure you start with zero. Once you have measured the radius, use your drawing compass or your improvised compass to draw a circle. That's it, you're done with the first circle. Now do the same with the second and the third circle using the data we have obtained.
Now you can see that we have three circles and they intersect at one place. And that place in this example would be Batangas. So therefore, if the point of intersection in this demonstration is Batangas, it will be the epicenter of the earthquake. So that's all for this demonstration. Thank you for watching.